You made it. Thank you for joining us. I am Pamela Bob, creator of Living on a Prairie and your host. I am here with, well, I'm going to tell him, the winner of Team Manly competition, <laughs> my hashtag imaginary boyfriend, Dean Butler, oh, along here with our lovely prairie bitch, Allison Arngram. Now, <laughs> I am telling you this, Dean, because, yes. you know, as you know, there was a sort of online, huge explosion online debate mm -hmm. on what team you were, either Team Manly or Team Adam. And, oh, um, got it. That's, yes, right, right. That's that's what we're yeah. talking about. Okay. And you were very, you were a little um, concerned that Team Manly was not going to, <laughs> you know, be the winner. But um, actually, Tony, I, I, I um, if you have those images, I want to show you something Dean, that um, uh -huh. oh yeah. yes, here we go. Let's so see. at the Little House See Me <laughs> event, I, at my table, I had cards with a QR code on the back <laughs> that people could take a fun Little House quiz. And some of the questions are the on the quiz had a lot to do with you, Dean. And we wow. have the results. So this is science now. Are you ready, I, Butler? I, I love it. Okay, <laughs> who is your biggest male prairie crush? The results are in at oh, over fifty percent, Zaldamo. So you see the set? yeah you you've got blue the half the wow. thing Wow, only and, got thirty three point three percent. Now what's who got Gar purple? What's the purple? Garvey eight point three. Garvey. Oh, Mr. Garvey, hot. Okay. Yeah, and okay. Adam, Team Adam, eight point three percent. A sad, pathetic number. But the, <laughs> Garvey. So who's on there? Who's our choice? Is Albert? Who's Albert? Get anything? Which you know? He's cute he's... as a kid. He's cute. <laughs> so wait, so it's <laughs> Team Albert is a thing. Zeldama. Oh yeah, no, there's people love Albert, and so it's Albert, and then Adam, of course, and then yeah. what's yes. the green one there? It's the That's green paw. one is Paw. Oh, Paw. Duh. Okay, so yeah. You beat Paw. That's I, hard I just, to do. I just really, think, Paw I think usually that's, won. I think I that's incredible. Won. I, you know, I think probably uh, like being present there helped that. Just being in the room. Because you're still that. cute. No, that may that may be it. To the fact you're still cute. <laughs> That, Even, that's there's that, that is, problem. That is a big component of it. Sure. And that he blushes. And, yeah, and yeah. Oh, I, I'm getting I'm feeling hot right now. <laughs> you didn't have yeah. a place in the pie chart at the time because who knew that Jonathan Gilbert Willie also was going to show up. That's true. And yeah. be that like this Matthew McConaughey, Keanu listen, Reeves hot dude and freak everybody out. Entered, we've been entered an entire new era. That's a whole new pie <laughs> wedge, <laughs> man, because now there's a whole he way. He gets a full pie to himself. We're I think. all the deeply confused. Crazy. Why do we all now have a crush on <laughs> Willie Olson? What has gone wrong uh, in our lives? Um, yeah. And I, I just want to thank you for running that contest yes. and, and, and sharing the results that I did so well in. Yes, he beat thank out Paul. That's that. really great. cool. You did great online, too. I mean, the comments, and there were many, many, hundreds if not thousands, and the majority of them were team manly just yeah. so you know. don't I'm, I'm don't get very, a big head I'm about it or very, anything. i'm just, very you know, no i i i won't i just i i count my lucky stars that it worked out that way that time who yeah, knows well, about who, who knows forever. about you know right well thank you for that Pam. <laughs> yeah. uh, pamela I, mean, I wanted to show you the statistics because you know this is serious stuff we're yeah talking about. thank you the science is anyway. all important here. The science is in. The science and, is and in. We, and we're going to have science more opportunities to, you know, to test this because Simi was yes. just the beginning. Just the kickoff. Of yeah. the, year, the, the, 24, the 50th anniversary year. And we are going to be all over the place I in, know, this, I'm tired in this coming just year. Everywhere. I know. Well, we just got back from, well, two weeks ago, Kentucky. Ducky. We were in Kentucky, and next week we will be Very in. Wild we'll in be it. We'll be in Marshfield. Church. Marshfield, not not Mansfield, which is where Laura's house oh, is, but just up the road, Marshfield, which is where the cherry blossom. Because and the man who started it, the fabulous Reverend Nick, it said when he first started it, they had no cherry trees. His wife said, "Honey, oh. we can't have a cherry blossom festival. We have no cherry trees." And he said, "Technicality. We'll plant some. It'll be great." <laughs> and um, he had a, is that true? I, I, yes. I totally believe that because you've met him and you know yes. what he's like. Um, of and course. he said, we are going to do this. And he got some people to come. <laughs> and it picked up. And now it is this enormous event. And they got some cherry trees. And it's all fabulous. And they get celebrities Wouldn't from all over. Wouldn't he have just named it the Oak Tree Festival? No. No. He said, we are yeah, no, having a cherry blossom. Would. And they had yeah. cherry pine. That's so random. A lot of presidential relatives. Grover Cle Cle Cleveland's yes. grandson yes. judging cherry pie. Uh, he's gotten people related to Lincoln and Washington and Jefferson. Oh, wow. and he's it's, into it's this a, thing. It's a really interesting little subcultural event. Panel. Little niches of uh, of history involved 
yeah, it's 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 trippy who he gets to come. And then a wacky assortment of celebrities, like all in one place. And well, Mary McDonough of the Waltons talked me into going the first time, and I was like, "You've gone every year." I've been going for years. I got hooked. She said, "It's a very strange event. It's kind of surreal. I swear, (laughs) you come, you won't want to stop going because it's just so crazy." And I get there, and what is happening? There's all these historical panels, all these various TV celebrities, and just the weirdest. There was John Ashcroft and Lulu Roman from Hee Haw were all at the same event, and I went. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> and it was a smash. And that's when I went, I'm coming. I'm just coming to this every year. And it's it's been a hit ever since. And there's probably, and a whole bunch of us are going because yeah. it's the 50th. So yeah, a whole exactly. wagon full of us Burry exactly. folk will be there. It'll uh, be who's awesome. going to that one? You two. We're going. We'll be there. Sh- and I, Charlotte, oh, Charlotte's uh, coming because yes. Charlotte is going to. Yes. Charlotte goes to everything. Uh, and our t- today's <laughs> guest is going. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. Is going. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we'll yeah, get a bunch. Baby well Grace, yeah. Baby yeah. Rose, the gang, the gang. Yes. So yeah. that's April twenty fifth mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. April twenty seventh. It will be fun. And right. then what happens after that? D, June. June. In Does June. something happen in June? Oh, then yeah. So I, I've got, I've got my, my little memoir coming out on my, June twenty fifth. My, my little Prairie, memoir. Prairie, Prairie my little Man. Memoir. My Little House Life and Beyond coming out. Kensington Books available for pre order yes. on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. But here's what, and, and I, I love that, and I, I think it's awesome. What I'm hoping that people will do is walk into their local bookstores yes. and ask for it. Go to your independent because bookstore. I think, buy it's, the book. I think yes. yeah, I think Thanks. that would be a very good thing. I mean, more people need to go into their local bookstores and ask for things because it, it just sort of helps everybody. So, uh, so Prairie I, Man. Let's go Prairie Man. Prairie Prairie man. man. That's right. Well, all Prairie of our man. books, all of the books that have been written, I think, virtually have all of them. I think, Prairie Tale, Prairie, Prairie Bitch, Prairie Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. There's just something, there's something about Prairie in the title that uh-huh. has been, and so when we were looking at titles, that was, uh, that was just a no-brainer. I mean, of mm-hmm. course we're going to stay, go down that that path. Are you going to be doing the whole like publicity tour yeah. with your book? Yeah. Are you going to be doing well, TV I, I shows think it's, and I all that I will be, well, I'll be, listen, I'm going to be talking to whomever will talk to me <laughs> yes, about it. it. You know, so you're I mean, coming I, on my show again. Of course I am. You're coming on my show again because now the book will be out and you will come on my show again. Of course I am. We'll talk about yes. it again. And I wrote a foreword. I wrote a foreword. A lovely foreword. Melissa Gilbert. Melissa Gilbert, yeah. Melissa Gilbert yeah. wrote a beautiful yeah. foreword. I wrote you know, a foreword. Yes, we love him. N- not, first, to, not, to, yes. not to, you know, rub your nose in it or anything, yes. but I have gotten a few comments and emails asking if uh, I have read your book yet, which... I don't have your book yet. Should I pre-order mine too, Butler? Shall I? No, you don't need to do that. It's okay. I don't mind pre-ordering. No, no, no. You you don't need. Well, yeah, you don't need to do that. I've got readers' copies, a few readers' copies at home, but they're not really fully corrected yet. As those, there there are no pictures in those books. There are there are some things that still need to be fixed. No, no. I will. I will happily purchase your book. No, no. I just don't want you to do that. I read it super early. It's great. You're very, you're, well, you're, thank you so okay, much. I mean, so it's so so the first place that we will have the book available for people is, it, it may be appropriately, is in Walnut, Walnut Grove. Walnut Grove in July. For the, oh, for the 50th. For the 50th that's going to be Okay, so, wait, so then you're in Walnut Grove. The, right. the Walnut, Walnut Grove. Grove. Right. In July, right. July 19th to the 21st. That's you're correct. In Walnut Grove. That's right. That's right. And then, and then we're, then we're out on the road with Gravel Road productions right. and we are going to be on the may 10th and 11th so jumping back now because may okay road. okay so yeah, tra- i we do little bit so cherry blossom cherry blossom right 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 and then um oh you guys uh are who's going to pepin wisconsin that's may pepin, wisconsin. right pepin wisconsin i however will be at uh club venus in chicago on may 9th mm-hmm. and then i will be what, at the Lori beachman theater are you doing what you're doing? Stand I'm up doing there? my show, Confessions of a Prairie Bitch. Yes. And then, then New York, York, Mother's Day, Mother's Day, New York. I will be at the Lori Beachman doing the show again. And then I will be in both Nashville and Louisville, back to back, uh, also doing the show at a fabulous club called Play, which has like disco and drag queens and madness. And I will be performing there <laughs> in Louisville and Nashville. Come see me play. And then, and then we're all the, going. The drag queen that's opening for you, yes. Allison, found I have drag me queen on opening. TikTock. Oh, he's so now lovely. We're, now we're connected. Beca- and I was yeah. very pleased because there's many drag queens, you know, you standard things you have shared, whatever. But who does Minnie Pearl? I ask you. <laughs> and apparently he's got a whole Mrs. Olsen thing. He's a southern drag queen and, and pays great drag. That would be brilliant really stuff. fun, I'm sure. Fun. 
It's going to so be very fun. fun. And yeah. then we're Independence, Independence, Kansas. Right. Yes, we're Independence, right. Kansas. Awesome. May Independence, Kansas. Which I have not June been to. It's 2nd. one of the little house sites I haven't been to, and I'm so excited. I haven't been there. I haven't been there either. Boom. So this is yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. No, it's going to be good. And that's June. Um, me and some of the gang are it's going to- It's actually May 31st to June 2nd is Independence, Kansas. May 31st is that whole weekend. And then Carrie Days in Keystone. In Keystone. July 26th through 28th. Some of us are sneaking off to Monte Carlo for a couple of days. Oh, very good. I know, I know. You're not. I'm sorry, you're not on the Monte Carlo list. It's very restrictive. But a couple of us get to go to Monte Carlo. Um, I know. We I, we not, totally tried to push you. Monte Carlo. I totally tried to sell you to to Monte Carlo, but it's just one of uh, you know. Yeah. No, I, yeah what are you I'll do? get there. Uh, maybe someday. You will get there. I'll get there. You will get there. And yeah. then and then it's um, <laughs> then comes Walnut Grove. Of course, I will be at oh. the Red Room in Provincetown, Massachusetts, the weekend before Walnut Grove. It's Bear Week in P Town. For those yes, of you know what that is. means. <laughs> and I will be there. So if you uh, know, you know. If you know, you mm-hmm. know. Ooh, Mr. Garvey. Let's just say. Uh, yes, I was going to say a Garvey era. Wall, the Garvey era, and then it's Walnut Grove, and then we're Wal- and then we're Keystone because it's care, and then it's all about Baby Carrie because Baby right. Carrie lived in Keystone and married a guy who helped create Mount Rushmore. There, yes, like there's thing. a when's, there's a very when's the huge, hmm. last event of this. Year, okay, Connecticut, this Pennsylvania, Johnny yeah. Cash's ranch in Nashville. I go to France for a while. I come back. It could be Branson. It looks or it like could Branson. Be a, an event in Alabama, possibly. Maybe but, a Christmas but thing. Maybe it, but I think Branson through is through Christmas. Be a, you think this goes not through, through Christmas? December? It'll go early December is when. But Branson, wow. the weekend of 15, wow. 16, 17, third weekend in November, Branson, Missouri. We are doing a thing, and we might we might do some kooky Christmas thing in early December in what? Alabama. Is something so, going? Is there going to be Something on actual September 11th, which was the well, I think, original. I think Cozy Air TV, Cozy yes, TV will doing be doing thing. something on September oh, 11th, great. and they're I'm, they're airing it. I'm yeah. going to have a party on September 18th. I'm not sure I have a location to be at. You're invited. Um, I'm going to have a okay. party because on the 18th, which, you know, Country Girls, the, the, the show started airing. The oh, pilot was March. Oh, we have the show starts that. airing yeah. on the 11th. But on the 18th is Country Girls. And that was the night exactly 50 years ago on the 18th that my whole life basically turned upside yeah. down. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm going to grab a restaurant and have my some friends over. My house is the best house in all of all Walnut Grove. of Walnut Grove. <laughs> real lace, genuine <laughs> oil, six genuine oil paintings, real lace and, curtains and look, on and, the windows. And looking at the I, the classic shots yes. of Catherine McGregor looking so proud at this moment, yes. her father looking a little embarrassed, and everybody else sort of, who Bringing. is this child? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, and, and how perfect. How it perfect. So it, That's it, what, it did change your life. That, is what, that was the audition yeah. piece. I mean, I did yeah, like yeah. prickly the whole script from the audition but it was the my home speech where they actually in the audition said could you do that again but oh what would you like me to change just read the thing about the house again <laughs> and it was that thing i read yeah. to, that i was hired for it was the my home yeah, speech that's no. what got me the job completely well, yeah. we have burned half we're, of we're this t- hour shall we just blew the show where we're right. going to do this again she's coming okay, with us to go. most of those locations so there you are <laughs> okay um, from the studios of UBN Go in Burbank, California, which I'm very sorry to not be at now. I'm back We're home. I'm very oh, sad to not be with you guys in person. Uh, visit SeeMeValley.com presents a special event podcast. This is the Little House 50 for 50 podcast. And Again, we are continually grateful to SeeMeValley.com for their commitment to present this podcast um, that celebrates this 50th anniversary year. Thank you. Visit SeeMeValley.com. Yes. Thank you very much. We get to thank people. I get the list. I get to thank a bunch of people. I get the Cozy TV, which, of course, we love because, hey, they rerun our show. We love Cozy TV. Rodex, Modern Prairie, which, if you know, that is my arch nemesis best friend, (laughs) Melissa Gilbert. (laughs) And there's an app. You can get the app. Modern Prairie, the app. Um, Price Ford, City of Simi Valley, of course, and the wonderful Adventist Health of Simi Valley. Thank you for your support of our Little House 50 for 50 podcast. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Let's meet today's guest. Okay. She arrived in Walnut Grove late in the run of the series, but she made a strong impression mm-hmm, on the mm-hmm. Little House family and in the audience, too. I loved her. She was born in Seattle, Washington, and raised in Portland, Oregon. She is a Bachelor of Science and Master of Arts degrees in 
in speech, English, and theater arts. She's a smarty pants. She taught high school in Portland for three years before moving to Los Angeles in 1980 to expand her acting ter- career. Good move. Over the past four decades, this lovely woman has carved out a professional acting career that includes over 100 diverse theater, Ooh. film, and TV roles. Her early on-camera work in L.A. began with series regular roles on Little House on the Prairie and Days of Our Lives. Ooh, versatile. More recently, she played a recurring character on the CW series Nancy Drew, which was so good. And her most recent credit was on SWAT. In her spare time, she enjoys working with children as well as teaching senior fitness. Please welcome Little House's Sarah Carter, Pamela Royland. (laughs) Hello, welcome. Welcome, Tammy. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, hello. Hi. Pamela, do you really like me just because I share your name? Is that... uh, well, you know, I, I, do you ever meet any other Pamelas? Because I never do. Not too many. No. Yeah, we're, we're bonded. Wow. Sister. We're bonded. I, don't, I, I don't feel like Pamela is an unusual name. It's I think not, it's, it's a name. I... Uh, well, at my age, I, I grew up with a lot of Pamelas. Oh, you did? And, and Pams. Huh. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So, this is a big deal because Uh-oh. Pam, Pam, <laughs> Pammy. Yes. See, <laughs> When uh, in in with Pamela with Pamela Bob, there is Bob. there is mm-hmm. no Mm-mm. there's no Pam. No Pam is no. An absolute, and I didn't real. I've known I've known Pam for like you know four years. You said Pam, and <laughs> I sorry I've known Pamela for four years, and and it one day she one day so she said to me one day she said to me, yeah, well your reaction was high maintenance. Oh, no, it's because I have to say it, and I hate having to say it. But once it's said, then it, I never have to say yeah, it. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, but she said it so uh, so definitively. There was no question that <laughs> that PAM was never to be used in association with her ever again. But with you, you're Pam, you're Pamela, you're Pammy. You're, it's like, uh, it's just been so easy. <laughs> so so I, I, high maintenance the over there. If I'm just so I said you high can call me maintenance. literally anything. Oh, call you Peabob. Anything. Peabob. Yeah. I like Peabob. Yeah, fun. Melabob. Melabob. Mel- that works. Yeah. All that. Yes. Uh, oh, Mel- oh, now I get it. Uh, it's, it's the yes. Pam. Yes. This the that part you don't like. It's, okay. It's all coming together. So together. glad you're yeah. here. So glad. So we digress <laughs> on this. So glad Thank you're you. here. We we were yeah we, we were on a plane last week. We we were there for I like see. you know for four hours talking about anything and everything. So it's wonderful. So should it be then that's how we'll tell them apart on the show. You're Pamela and she's Pam for yes. today. Yeah, let's that's do that. Help us. Or, or Pammy. That okay? or, or Pammy. Anything. Pammy. Yeah. Yeah. Pamela Jean is when I'm in trouble. No. Yes. Oh. Pamela Jean, get in here. That's yeah, exactly yeah. all your names. <laughs> yeah, all your names. All names. <laughs> you no, know, we're not doing that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to be in trouble here. <laughs> okay. So, all right. So let's just let's get right into this because I, I think it's important. So tell us sort of the the establishment story, the 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 early story of of Pam Roy Lance and how did you get to be who you are and you're sitting here with us. Well, I was born. You know, your whole life. I know that. That's we have to assume that. That's an assumption. We, but you know, take us through that that story of uh, of you being you being you. Shall I cut forward to uh, you know always wanting to be an actress when I grew up? It that was works. all yeah. what I dreamed of. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, and what, what was course, the beginning of that dream? What when? How did that? How did that happen? I, well, it was watching Julie Andrews and Doris Day. Oh, who I just loved. Wow. Yes, wanted to grow up to be just like them. Of course, years later. Ultimately feminine yes, women. Yes, yes. And well, that, is that why you're yeah. so sweet? Because that's who you were watching. <laughs> I mean, Doris Day, Julianne. Yes, right. You're like the nicest person. <laughs> well, thank you. I, very very I, sexy she, was Doris Day. She was, she she was a, a hot yeah, thing yeah, back then. Yeah, yeah, very sexy in this very prim, proper way. Yes. Very sexy. In a way that Sex, if you re- Sexy vanilla. Yeah. Yes. Did. Yeah. And if you revisit it now, you go, hmm. Not really the kind of woman I really do want to be because she yeah, was so 1950s yeah. in the uh, package there. So sexy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, okay, I'm taking that. Now, no, now, no, 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 Dean has a type. <laughs> okay. Got it. Oh, oh, there's no question. <laughs> no, no, no doubt. Yeah. I, 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 like, the, I like the packaging. Got yes. it. And, well. and Doris Day was all about the packaging. She totally was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And she was yeah. a strong woman, too. She really. Yeah. 
grew into her yes. own hair. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, so go ahead. But I'm yeah, sorry. So that was the, that, that was, this is what stuck me to yeah. movies and television, mm-hmm. and I want to grow up and be just like them sort of thing. Wow. So that's wow. where I was. And I remember in the eighth grade, I had to do a journal on what it wanted to be when I grew up. Oh, geez. And, you know, everybody wants to be an actor. So I said that. And mm. Mr. Sanderson said, Mr. no, Sanderson. you can't. Everybody <gasps> does that. You can't grow up uh, and be an actress. That's not realistic. Uh, he says, well, you know, you have to do something that's going to make you some money and you can be taking care of yourself. <laughs> so he That's said, a fair <laughs> consideration for yeah. Mr. Sanderson. But he's being was. realistic. But, he but, was. But, okay. no, a dream killer, a, a dream dreams. killer, but yeah, realistic. Exactly. You can't just say never. You could say, well, it's very <laughs> difficult <laughs> to. Yes, you know. yes. You wrote right. it a bit. Yes, yes. but yes. no, he was pretty definitive. And I, wow. You know, it gave me something to jab at him later and it gave me something to have a backup, right? So he says. Did you have a chance? So you set this straight with Mr. Sanderson later? Well, no, I, I oh. went back to do it, but he wasn't there anymore. Darn it. But, oh, yeah. Not uh, that I don't remember these things. Back there, she's remember. holding the grudge. <laughs> holding the grudge the whole time. Okay, good. But yeah, so but he did said that, you... Did that affect you? Did you think, oh, I shouldn't? Yeah. Or were you like, oh, no, I don't oh, care what no, you're no, saying? No. It was more like, how dare you? Just really? How Good very you. dare you? You wow. just say that and you watch me go. You know that. Oh, so it was probably yeah. a huge launching yeah, of the, your career sure. to say, "How tell yeah, me what absolutely. the heck I'm gonna do, you that Buster?" Was Good strong. for you. Nice. Because yeah. I think a lot of a lot of people would be sort of uh, oh. would be repressed by that yeah. kind of from a, an authority figure that you're supposed to respect and someone's yeah. telling you you can't do that well maybe I can't do that good for you Pam. well and you know I was raised that way too to be uh, quiet and demure and to say yes and and so that was my life but not inside here you know you peel this off mm. and there's a whole other slicey thing going on yeah right? uh, yeah uh, anyone who knows <laughs> anyone who knows Pam knows that there all this there is all this sweet Packaging around uh, sweet, sweet packaging sweet. around okay. Pam, and she's very demure and all this. She's but so there's nice. an edge on <laughs> Pam. She is sneaky, edgy. We all go. She's the nicest person. She's so sweet. Do not cross her. Do not cross her. <laughs> Well, yeah. there's a limit. We all have a limit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. But but you do. But you you can set people right. Mm-hmm. In the most charming way, mm-hmm. but it can have a just if you're listening for it, you can hear a little edge. Yeah, that's in it. true. Yeah, but it's not a bad edge. It's not you're never mean to anybody, but you have a way of saying things that communicates your feeling about something, but you do it in a way where someone has to think about it for a minute. See, did she really say that to me? Did she really mean that? And I would say, yes, she really did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she said it. She meant yep. it. Oh yeah, 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 yep, 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 But yeah. I don't often mean to be cruel or no, anything like that. Cruel. But you're never yeah. cruel. You're never cruel. That's you're not, never mean. Yeah, that's not in you to be cruel. Legend. No, I also think that's a really good quality to have that little bit of something in there. Oh, Otherwise, yeah. you'll just be a wet blanket. Well, were you yeah. like on the soap yeah. opera? Now, were you a nice well, person on the soap? I, I mean, was, and it tanked my uh, my character and my career oh. on the soap yeah. because I didn't give them anything to write for. I wasn't um, edgy and sexy nice. and hot and steamy. I mean, wasn't that. Mean come, so people are oh, in, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'd come off of Little House yes. and Prairie was where I was comfortable. Right. And the whole that's where you wanted so, to be. Yeah, it was really hard. To, to um, oh, well, I didn't know. I just didn't go. And the one of the writers said, Pam, listen, uh, we don't write every episode, so we watch in between. And I'm watching you, and I need something to write. And they passed me off. I mean, I, I, sh- I should have taken the hint. They passed me off to two of the sexy guys on the show. and Just to work. see what would happen. Yeah, and not, the a fire was never lit. <laughs> now oh, I dear. could go back and I could play a matron quite well, right? But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it didn't work for that time. Now, you watched Little House before you were on I it. You actually it. knew all about us. I totally did. I read yeah. the books. Oh. Probably... Long before Mr. Sanderson's class, you know, and I, I loved the books. I, I watched the show. I as became a teacher later, which is what Mr. Sanderson told me to do. He said, you can do two notebooks, one on being an actor and one on being on teaching. Drama. teaching. And oh, I said, no. what's drama? I didn't even know what drama oh, was. So, sweet. so yeah. Wow. So and, and yeah. And, and it's nice that I did have that career to, to launch you know, just a professional life, uh, uh, independent life, mm-hmm. and be able to move out of the house and things like that, and to fall back on during the lean times of the acting part. But yeah, so I was teaching high school, and I would go home at three, like three o'clock, three thirty, turn on that TV, watch those reruns, and think, why can't I get on a show like Little House? I love that show. Mm. Wow. So that's wow. where I, I just kept drifting toward. And um, it was pretty remarkable to be able like, to not just get on the show. But to get on as a series regular, right. and not just yeah. any series regular, but right. 
the one who lived in the little house. Yeah, no, what a I gift think that's that was. I think that's pretty cool. You, yeah. you have a great uh, you you have a really interesting audition story. Another mm-hmm. thing that could have tanked you, yeah, if, if you allowed it to. Absolutely. So tell that story. <laughs> so uh, the audition for the soap opera, which I would go to do after Little House, was for this same guy that. I auditioned for later. It was for the role of Sandy Horton, the fourth Ooh. Sandy Horton to come along. The fourth and Sandy Horton. The fourth Sandy. And I, I went to the audition, and he called my agent, and he said, he said she's good. It's a shame she's so fat. And <gasps> I really oh, wasn't joy. that fat. Oh, it was, you, you, know, pretty, you couldn't do that today, but you, you could know, do they it They would then. kill you if you said that now. <laughs> oh and also, like, what? I, I don't know. Pam- I kind of Pamela like is a little edgy. That. She is she feeling a little like you I'm with you. Pamela yeah. is having a fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, is that, I mean, it's, uh, it's such a hard pill to swallow because on one hand, you're like, no, like that shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter. And and then, you know, sometimes it does matter. And you sure hate it does. that sometimes it does matter. You camera know? adds yeah. 10 pounds. Um, but we've seen yeah, her it, in the first episodes of Little House. Yeah, She's but, on, no, but wait a minute. Like, I was thinking, fat. yeah, but, but <laughs> you, you did, but you auditioned for Little House before, or did no, you audition the first time? Uh, okay, so, yeah, so, Cornell, okay. So, yeah, so Days of Our Lives was first. Okay. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah okay. and then and Little Little House. I'm okay. so sorry. Yeah. Okay. But then I would go back to earn this very same role. I was too fat to play. Oh, after, God. Uh, after you, yeah. and you had a similar where mm-hmm. someone said to you in your audition for Little House, if you could lose five pounds. And t- so tell tell that. It was, this, was the man, the so late 70s, early 80s, wonderful. they were just brutal, just yeah, brutal monsters. But Michael, and Michael said it, and he yeah. was wow. much more gracious. He he called hmm. my agent. He didn't he say said, it's a pity you're fat. <laughs> no, he didn't say Jesus. that. <laughs> he just said, um, I like her. I just need her to lose a little bit of weight for me. And the reason was because I couldn't be completely, I was very athletic and I looked like yeah. that and I couldn't be so healthy looking. Right. I, I, you know, we had to, be a, li- a bit lean, right? We had to be sure eating the food we were making out back. So, right. and so, you yeah. weren't eating, you weren't making chocolate every day on the set, <laughs> okay, which yeah. you were eating every day <laughs> in, in your. So, tell I that. Was. Okay, so that was before Days of Our Lives as okay. well, and it was my. <laughs> tell that. I, mean, I feel like I know your story so well, so I'm yeah. asking. Yeah, so the yeah, chocolate and thing, tell us the thing I, again. Yeah, tell yeah. us, tell us the chocolate thing. Tell us okay. the chocolate thing because we know. Which is my downfall. So bad. I love chocolate. As Me you too. Know. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh my god. So yeah. yes, if I, you I, don't love chocolate, you're a psychopath. Like, thank don't you. trust anyone wrong. that thank doesn't you. love chocolate. Thank you. That should be on all those dating sites. That should be the number one thing. Yes or no? Yes. So, yes. So I was working in what we affectionately called the chocolate factory, which really wasn't an I Love Lucy thing. It was just a, an importer of a wonderful Swedish mint called, mm. we called it Phaser, but it was really Fotzer chocolate. Oh. And it was a tiny little mint, one product. And I could pack that away. Really, I always <laughs> say, pack a box, eat a box, pack a box, eat a box. And it was, it was fair. And, uh, and it showed. <laughs> and that's yeah, right. why the, this yeah. casting director at uh, Days didn't mm-hmm. like what he was seeing. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I I did. The great thing about the job is that we had a boss who loved actors. He hired mm-hmm. actors all oh, over, wow. oh, and nice. we could all come and go for auditions or jobs or anything. Oh, that's that it was great. perfect. It was a really nice. great, great setup. Um, plus, he encouraged you to to pursue your career. What wow. I think is unlike what, Mr. What was his name? Yes, Anderson. Anderson. Yeah, so, Anderson. Anderson. Yeah. Anderson. What I think is amazing is so you it, it all it's all about the messenger. So. Michael reaches out to your agent yeah. very tactfully. Mm-hmm. Says, "I love her. I love her. It would be great if she could lose a little weight." Now, what's uh, amazing about this, and I, we, I've known you now for all these years. Yeah. You lost that weight. I did. And you have okay. Everyone goes up and down a few pounds here and there, but you have remained lean, fit, all of that. Always, you are you, sporty you, spice yeah, of the cast, nice. girl. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what? you have never gone back to no. Yeah, no. you really got it. Whatever that was that he said to you, obviously he communicated. So, so what did yeah. he? What did you oh, hear and all that? Uh, well, honestly, what it was, Dean, it was a change of stakes. I I wasn't living for a soap opera. I moved from Portland, Oregon, with the dream of the Waltons, a show called Eight Is Enough. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to be on anything. I'll Walt allow Disney. you to mention the Waltons just this one time. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned it first so you could forget word. about it. No. <laughs> um, and anything Walt Disney, and 
little house. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. there it was. Yeah. The dream yeah. right there was yeah. written down. It's what I wanted. Yeah. So suddenly the stakes were higher, mm-hmm. right? It meant mm-hmm. more to me. And so I yeah. thought, okay, this is the man I'd love to work for. I can't believe sure. I just am meeting him. And so, yeah, it was, yeah. it was just, let's go for this. And I quit the job at the chocolate factory. Because, you know, that was the key it was factor. That was yeah, pushing you over that five pounds. Yeah, that was yeah. it right yeah. there. Yeah. It, was, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. it was pretty influential. Called my parents and I said, could you front me some money, which they did. And so the time I would have spent at work, I was walking around Lake Balboa and I was working out at a gym. And it, I would do this for my eight hour day. And then I was, uh, yeah, that was my day. But you were eating, uh, like, yeah. you were, you yeah. didn't starve yourself or take drugs. You just no, no, went no. and hit it the was, gym and, yeah. like, really worked at being and athletic the then, yeah. not, so like, starve myself your, then. Yeah. How good, soon was good. your little well, house callback from the, how much time did you have to lose the weight? Great question, Pamela Bob. <laughs> there, I got it all. Pamela Rachel Bob. Um, it's all in there, so... Um, <laughs> It was suck I, up. Me, I know. don't don't no, suck up. No, she's doing it right, Dean. No, <laughs> we Pamela stick together. <laughs> Aren't you sad you're not named Pamela? <laughs> I'd love to call you Pamela yeah, Butler. Uh, uh, sh- I'm now I'm embarrassed again. I mean, it's like that, no one's ever said that to me. Okay, go go okay. ahead, tell the story. <laughs> Say, I love these two people here. Um, uh, okay. Killing me. What were we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> Where were we? What, how, how long time? did how you hit the gym? Yeah. Yes, the you move into question. the gym, you're hitting it. Yeah, and Pamela Bob is a great question. It wasn't Wait. a long time, right? No, no, he told me okay. it was going to be um, at least a month, but probably oh, more wow. because he was okay. going to be doing okay. some other things. All right, all right, so doable. Yeah. And it, yeah. was, it was two weeks. And <gasps> yeah, I'd already <gasps> seen Susan. Um, I'd already met him. And I... Wow. And I I don't recall if he was one, if, if I was one of the people he was under the desk with, um, as he did. He hid. Under the desk with, uh, with you? I mean, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hiding under the desk. Please explain. No, Hiding yeah, under no. the desk. I don't think <laughs> he did that, please. That no. He was not that kind in of my, a producer. Yeah, in my dreams. You know, like, right. Wait, I tell, explain wish. the hiding um, under the desk. People are going, <laughs> hiding under the desk? What? Well, he didn't want to intimidate the actors. Right. We all loved him, and we all were just So Michael would sometimes shaking, so ha- have somebody else read with you, but he would oh, hide yeah. in the room. Susan, Susan, Susan always read. So Susan read. would read, and Michael yeah. was hiding right. yeah, in the room to observe, but literally yeah. under right. a desk in some cases. Right. Yes, he would. But did the people know that he was hiding under the desk? Oh, you know, he he was there. I mean, he wasn't, he wasn't invisible. I mean, he, he was, you weren't reading in secret. You knew, but he didn't want to get in your eye line. But sometimes, but sometimes he'd be outside the room. Yes, I think. He would hide. Yeah. So, so but maybe that was. I hadn't heard that. But yeah, because, but I don't even recall. Anyway. Yes, so I did have a little bit of time. And I had these wonderful three roommates, and they took me shopping. We, uh, we bought a prairie outfit, which I don't oh. even know how we found that in 1981 wow. or whatever. Sure. And it was, um, it, it was at the, it gathered at the waist, so it was very tight, and they put a big prairie belt there, and then the skirt hid the... The hippies, Good. So, you know, right? Good. So, I, I, but he said, no, it was in your face. All you need no, is a course. small torso, yeah. and that's the thing. It's those like, first five pounds yeah. that'll right. hit the face yeah. first, that's and that's right. what he needed, which yeah. you weren't that's too, because right. you have the cute little cheeks, and then yeah, 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 yeah. He talked about that later on. He said that's where I saw it. So, and he was a very, he was, he's told me very imp- impressed by my discipline to do it. So huh. uh, it was literally just being very careful what I ate. And my roommates had this huge party, and it was so hard to just eat carrots and celery, yeah, sure. and, Ugh, you know. But Ugh. it was it meant something. So yeah, that's where, where that all happened. And then suddenly, you're hired, and and Stan and I did the same thing after those series. Of Stan auditions. Ivar, you're talking. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, Stan Ivar, Mr. John, John Carter. Carter. Yeah, we both ran down the stairs there at um, MGM. And, or the casting office there, mm-hmm. and we go to the payphone and we call our parents. The payphone. Both of us. Wow. First thing both of us did. It's the wow. '80s. There's it's no, no cell phones. Oh, you yeah. literally run that's to the right. payphone, hysterical, scrambling for quarters yeah, no, yes. to it's call your family it's to incredible. tell them the important yeah. news. Oh yeah. my God. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. To tell. I love that yeah. story so much. It's such Thank a manifestation. You. I just, I love it. I mean, I hate that you had to lose the weight. <laughs> 
<laughs> I really <laughs> <Me> do. <laughs> but I love that you manifested what you knew your vision was for yeah. yourself. But getting out of the chocolate yeah. factory, pack a box, eat a box, yeah. probably really <laughs> popped it over the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Right yeah. away. Yeah. That's two yeah. pounds right away. Oh, just absolutely. not yeah. eating the chocolate daily. Day. I mean, yes, yeah, boom, that's going to start and, coming down. And, and, and end up walking around the lake as opposed yeah, to sitting there packing and eating. Yeah. 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 Okay. Of course. Yeah. Makes a big difference. It really did. So, yeah, it was good. I also had the first acting teacher I had here, Jackie Kelly. Calgill. Her son, Chad Calgill, oh, okay. Susan Sukman McRae loved him and oh. brought him back many times okay. to play Little Boy, Little mm -hmm. Boy One, Little mm -hmm. Boy on Train mm -hmm. for uh, not just Little House, but I mm -hmm. think uh, maybe A Highway to Heaven. I forget. Anyway, mm -hmm. she loved that guy. Mm -hmm. His mother was my acting teacher. Oh. She just turned 90. Wow. And she <gasps> wow. had a, wow. yeah, a, a psychology background. So for our classes, we would start... Uh, the class every night would be, or every once a week, we would start with, what happened to you this last week that you did for your career? Mm. And what, you know, did you have an audition or, or whatever? So if anybody had something going, for the rest of the week, we would get on the phone and call each other up and oh. say, you know, keep hanging there. This is yours to have. So I remember when That's I great. was climb, climbing through these I think it was five auditions I did for Little House. Oh, wow. Um, wow, wow, wow. The fifth being the worst with the network. But I, I, they called me every week. These, these classmates of mine would call and they would say, hang in there. This is yours. You're going to get it. So that real positive. What a support system. That never it's happens. Awesome. No, in Hollywood, right. it's this like stab yeah. in back. The other no, students are going, you for, suck. I'm going to go for, for it. failure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, isn't yeah. that that some old saying, it's not enough, that they succeed but you have, you have to, to fail too. yes yes, yes. Yeah, like, yeah. over your dead i'm gonna walk over it's your that, dead yes, lifeless yes. body it's and that get zero that. sum game yes, yes. so that's yes. incredible to have a bunch of actors actually go yeah. no we love yeah, you and we want lovely. you to get this part yes, and you're gonna make yeah oh my oh, god that's the sign yeah. of a good teacher to foster that kind of high honestly yeah. yeah it was pretty exciting so so when you actually arrive in this so you go through the process you get it and you step into this world I mean, we all know who were there, but what was your gut sense of it as you stepped into it for real? And wait, I just need to interject okay. because not only are you stepping into this world, mm -hmm. you're literally stepping into the little house, which is yeah. a whole yes. other. You're replacing. Like, it's like the Ingalls are yes. moving away and people I are mean, freaking out that the Ingalls aren't going to be in the little house. Who are you? And then, and then you got Stan Ivor. It's, and it's like, oh, it my God. I'm yeah. still astounded by Michael Landon's like brazen uh hoopla to yeah. actually yeah. think that he could pull it off yeah. which he did yeah which yeah. he did and i yeah. that well to back up just a little bit six of us came on the show at the same time his daughter who would play at a plum leslie yes. mm -hmm. and then shannon mm -hmm. doherty who would play jenny yep. mm -hmm. and then the four carters so we all yeah. come in as a unit right. which was helpful right because you're not on your own entering something that is so stable and fixed and has been there for many people, eight years already. Yeah, it's an institution. Or, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? So, yeah. but Michael Landon had that thing about accepting each other, whether it was crew or cast. You worked professionally. You treated each other with respect. Yep. You cared about each other. So the family feeling was already there. So we never had a single day of feeling like we had to earn our way. We just felt embraced. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Melissa did it, yeah. uh, and she and Leslie. When I met Allison, we were, I swear we were up in Sonora on location, yes. I think. because it was Return and Ellie. You yes, were already there, and then I was gone when you came yeah. in, and then I came back for Return and Ellie, and we got to hang yeah. out in Sonora. Oh my gosh, and I hear, you know, I'm like everybody else in the world thinking, Nellie Olson. <laughs> what is she going to eat me for dinner? What's she going to be like? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, she, and we came out of our, I think our hotel rooms were standing in the mm -hmm. hallway. And I didn't know what to do, where to go. It was evening. And yeah. and you invited me to dinner. And I and I did think, will she eat me or will she <laughs> eat next to me? What, what, what will we have here? Hannibal but, Lecter oh has gosh, said, yes. would you care to get a dinner? <laughs> she me alive. She was. And the auntie is, and fava beans on the menu. Yes. Yeah, right. right. And you know, it's like I'm trying to remember. I remember being at dinner with like you and Melissa and stuff hanging out there but I'm like oh right and I don't even remember because this was a normal thing for me to do as people have said and it's not like a term it's like oh yes I just met you in the hallway and then immediately invited you to dinner because of course I would do that because that, that, that I was like oh hi yeah let's hey you want to go it to is who you are <laughs> and so you know if nobody's met her personally she's the antithesis of Nellie <laughs> yeah. she of couldn't Nellie. be more yeah. opposite yes. Nellie as a human being but don't you think through. it also it always comes from the top right so like I do I do Michael Landon mm -hmm. and Kevin Cree obviously yep. set yep. a tone and sent a, sent 
a standard. Yeah. Yes, yes it did. Right. Yes. That, exactly. that you had you abided by, and it also taught, especially the young actors, how to treat others, how to welcome sure. them in, like no competition, no nastiness. Sure. Um, I, I was just watching part of the A and E doc on Michael Landon, and oh. there was a um. Kent McRae was on it being interviewed oh, wow. and he said, you know, it was very easy, you know, that the actors knew what to do. They came in, they did their job. And if anyone, you know, was was a problem or or nasty, like they were gone by the end of the day. It was simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and I thought like, oh, that's that's a standard, mm -hmm. right, that that you are teaching for the rest of it. So it doesn't surprise me that everyone was very welcoming to yeah. you. Oh, absolutely. And um I'll back up just it's one second. It's surprising that it but happens, it, <laughs> but it it's is. not surprising it on is. that show. Yeah. You know, given the nature of the industry, it's very surprising it happens. But yeah. Mr. Butler here, who I, of course, was nothing more than a fan. Like every other female oh, was going, no. ah, <laughs> oh, Mr. Butler. So, and I still remain a fan of both of these two people. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, this was like suddenly just, and he's so nice, and that's all I can think of. Mm -hmm. And he's so polite and diplomatic, and wow, what an amazing human being. So this is what I'm sensing and feeling mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. a lot of love, a lot of respect and appreciation for human beings, not just actors. Mm -hmm. So I'm not feeling mm -hmm. at all intimidated about going in. I'm feeling accepted as, as a group of the six of yeah. us coming in, yeah. and I'm feeling... Oh, wow, my dream came true. This is wonderful. Yeah. My first day of standing inside that little house set and looking up at the loft as we're having a, a shot get set, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm the only female on this entire planet who's standing here in these little boots, big boots, sorry, in my prairie dress and looking up at these boys up there. And I thought, that's only one person that gets to fill those shoes. Wow. And how blessed I was that a total dream come true and a life of getting ready and putting your ducks in a row and and you know believing but an innocence in the believing that yes it could happen to me i have since gotten far more jaded thinking will i ever work again or i can't do yeah. it anymore those things the negative thoughts that come in but so i had this real uh, uh, mm. rose colored glasses sort of innocence to come in with and i didn't know until we were doing autograph signing uh, and that started for maybe me uh, uh, maybe two years ago. Hmm. And wow. people would say, oh, I didn't like you. We didn't <laughs> like the Carters. I didn't Resentment. want a new mother. Yeah. I suddenly thought, really? And then I realized, well, of awful. course, if somebody took my favorite mother away, I sure. would have a problem with it. So it wasn't until that time. And I'm kind of glad because that way I got to work for mm. that whole year and mm. those three movies after and not have any mm -hmm. feelings of I shouldn't be there, feel small. Mm -hmm. It was just mm – -hmm. and Sarah was kind of a tough cookie, right? Mm -hmm. She was yeah. oh, a little stronger, nice character. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now that's mm -hmm. a thing. Okay, so how do you feel about that? Because that is a thing, a big fan debate online. Are you – you instead the interlopers who have dared – Dare to yes. live in the sacred set of the little house, and obviously the plot line: these people move, this lovely couple and their children move in. But there were fans like, "No, you cannot be in the house," oh, and it, yes. it's weird. It's just weird. What do you do yeah. with that? Because well, it's I, not your fault, for honestly, God's sake. I think Michael Landon helped us, and I didn't. Again, didn't know it for years. Later, he brings in this handsome young. Uh, Stan Ivar, John Carter, who resembles him in a younger day. Mm -hmm. He brings in me. I, I know Karen and I, I mean, I, I had brown hair. It's, it's blonde now, mm -hmm. but it was brown on the show. But we both have blue eyes or light sure. colored eyes and fair complexion. Yeah, similar. Yeah, yes. there's a no, similar the vibe right? is very similar. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, all yeah. of that similar yeah. vibe. Yeah. And then it's smart enough to bring in two boys to shift to it. Switch it to, all to, Yeah, boy yeah. energy in the house. Yeah. So he created something where people were going to look, I think, and be curious. And then the storylines just blew out of that. And that was interesting, new, different stuff. So I think it. I think he created he created a storyline where John and Sarah were friends of El Manzo and Laura. I mean, we were your best friends, and we had storyline together. So mm -hmm. he gave us you. He gave mm -hmm. us opportunities to look good. Oh, and by the way, I was not a member of the Screen Actors Guild Union, and neither I'm well Stan was. Child. But yeah, neither of us had a lot of credits, and the network didn't want us. And I didn't oh, know wow. that. You had a big scary network interview. Yes, that was horrifying. It was our last interview. And Michael called in the morning and he said, look, this is just protocol. I want you. I'm the executive producer oh, you're God. in. You are the family that I want. Don't let this bother you. 
it's going to be horrible. So I met Stan across the street at NBC there, at Buena Vista, and uh, we rehearsed the lines. We hugged and held each other. Uh, he told me it was going to be okay we, and reminded me what Michael had said. Mm -hmm. And we went in and uh, it's, it's like a semicircle sort of thing and you're pretty distant from these six people or five people. One woman, all guys. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, okay, I'll just... I'll just look at the woman. Maybe she'll, you know, we'll have this female thing going. We'll be, I'll be comfortable. And oh, she was like this the whole time. She was ice. I mean, you could uh, feel her. She oh my was God. Just, like, I don't want these people at all. The guys were far nicer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mm -hmm. it was, it was a tough thing. We walked out thinking, I, I don't think we're going to get this. Mm -hmm. And wondering oh. how much authority oh. Michael really had. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, yeah. A, a matter of form. But a and how do you go as a network student and get bitchy at a Little House in the Prairie audition? <laughs> how do you go and go, well, these people are auditioning for a nice couple in Little House, and I'm going to sit here and scowl at them. <laughs> how? Where? I can't, I just, it's well, power. People, I mean, people. it's yeah. just like it people just power. get high on power. It, and they, power. They, it happens so often. It's just so wild. So, Pam, take us to a break because we, oh, we have yes, to pull we're just this babbling. up because we're, we're running babbling. long here. So take us to a break and I we'll will. do a yeah, thing. Thank you. We will continue. With Pamela, I'm calling you Pamela. Pamela Roylands after this from visitsimivalley.com. When you visit Simi Valley, California, you are stopping into the pages of history. Go from the pioneers to the presidents, explore beautiful wildflowers, hike through iconic Hollywood locations, and end your day aboard the actual Air Force One at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library and Museum. Less than 15 minutes from Los Angeles and 30 minutes from Universal Studios, Simi Valley has small town charm with big time history. Go to visitsimivalley.com for more information. And for their support of the Little House 50 for 50 podcast, we also thank Cozy TV. Oh, we already thanked them, but we'll thank them again. Cozy TV, no, Rodex, Modern Cozy Prairie, TV, Price thanks. Ford, City of Simi Valley, and Adventist yes. uh, Health Simi Valley. Thank you all very much. And there are so many others. We couldn't be more grateful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome back with our guest, Pamela Roy Lance. Okay, let's cover the 50th anniversary event because you had a, a, a lot to do with this event. So what were your impressions? What do you think the impact of it was? Give us give us all of your thoughts about- Oh yeah, your Valley, work on that committee. Happened. Oh my God. Oh, you Woman. know, at the end of the Pretty day, great. so grateful to have had the opportunity. Yeah. Even though we struggled through a lot, I mean, there were big yeah. dreams and, and there were great artists and artisans and designers and engineers who crafted it and made it happen. The, the leadership of Dean Butler and mm -hmm. Kathy Van Etten, both, I mean, it was just remarkable. Uh, I started out just as the note taker, trying to be useful, keeping right. track of what we right. said we do and keeping people on task to do it. And later on, it, it just evolved into that 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 dumping ground. I was a person that people would call yes. and say, dumping yes. ground. what about? I love that. I dumped yeah. on you several yeah. times oh, myself. Was, <laughs> Thank God you were there. No. Yeah. It was yeah, no. a great place to be. Yeah, no, uh, Pammy, you were, because of the, your nature, people feel like they can pick up the phone and call you and express what they're really feeling they about something. And they, they, they felt like they were safe to do that. Yeah. And you listened and you forwarded information and you, you sort of, you know, you kept information flowing where, where someone maybe wasn't going to call me. That they would call you, and then you would call me or text me, or and so and you and Kathy, and so we were able. We maybe couldn't respond as quickly to everything, but you really were so essential in keeping that information. You flow could going. distill you did an awesome everything yes, from all the she, stuff and yes, make it work. Distilled yeah. very nice. Thank you for that, and yeah. and it was an honor to have been in that position. But everyone truly had so much to do. Everyone was so yeah. busy that it only made yeah. sense to filter things down, get them down to bullet points and say, this is yep, what they yep, need. Yep. And we were honestly, in some ways, flying by the seat of our totally pants. Totally flying we were, by the seat of our pants. Yeah, creating it as we went. It, it, was, it was such a huge event. And there were some people involved who'd never done an event like this yes, in their lives yes. going, um, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> yeah. Ah, don't yeah. 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 It was, I think it was the... While it was all oh, it was challenging, and we didn't know necessarily where we're going, but what we did know is that we wanted to get there. Yep. Wherever that there was, was going to be, we wanted to get there, and and I, I think that's what ultimately kept it together. 
and as it as the as the sales of tickets started to happen, and Boom. we could start to see the the revenue change to the event, which was critical. Mm-hmm. We the more we realized we could do as tickets were selling. I mean, it was really the 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 event was able to be fully realized as a result of people's commitment to wanting to be there that was a that was a huge thing it was that incredible tenacity there were slow starts there were false starts there were moments where we were thrilled because we had a sponsor and it was it was great and then and we would go we would tank i mean there would just be those moments on this roller coaster and over time where we started up here it's like an actor giving your best performance way up here and you've Mm -hmm. got nowhere to go so we just (laughs) <laughs> there were times when morale got so low. It's like, are we going to make it? No yeah. One, yeah, but no one stopped. No one ever, ever stopped. Their it, their direction might have gotten more uh, focus and, and, and just quieter to their own determination to do their part and do their thing and hang in there to the end. Nobody jumped ship. The, you know, the thing didn't go awry and become something else other than there was, was no crash through. and burn yeah there was it just yeah, kept it, the tra- it wasn't fire festival the train yeah. stayed yeah. Yeah. on the track it did smoke was coming out of some of the cars and things were on fire wheels. and it just stayed on yeah. the track it was crazy but, but pam oh. were you were you able to enjoy yourself oh during my the weekend? Gosh. i mean well <laughs> i mean yes i did um good it, there was a moment where things were being put up that only we got to see, those of us who were there. And then, so suddenly you're standing there and you're looking at the dream. Somehow we got mm. what we originally envisioned and thought we had lost and were going to lose and never oh, have. Wow. And just thinking, I don't know if somebody will have something to do if they buy a three-day ticket. Well, they have um, is something to keep them interested and will this really come off? And oh my gosh, that sense of pride, having been on a team like this, yeah. with the professionalism, the talent, and then that steady on drive, even though spirits were broken, I'm telling you, there mm-hmm. were there were phone calls that I took where people were saying, I'm gonna quit. And I'd say, No, hang in there. You know, this is this is your work that people are seeing. There I mean, there were moments where I think I, I went to France. Yes, I said, you so know, I, you know, you're having these committee meetings, but I had this other thing in France, and I can't deal anymore. I'm still completely available my phone. I'm still totally in. I'm coming. I'm doing the press. I'm doing the thing. But I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna go be in France for a while now, yeah, and right. I'll text you because I just, I, my brain is exploding. Well, I'm going to even France. For, <laughs> even, for, even for Chris and myself, you know, the, those few weeks leading yes. up to the event, we were, we were also going like, do we? Do we have a place to yes. stay? Like, how, how are we, we getting we, there? We, we what is nothing happening? other than we know we're supposed to be there, and we're just going to yeah. trust right. that someone's going to tell us we have plane tickets and yes. a hotel to stay in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> which, Honestly, which is what happens? What, so. One of the one of the really things that that people seem to really love were these panels, which mm-hmm. uh, Pamela and you and Chris Chica ran the yeah. panels. Um, oh my God! And mm-hmm. I, I just want the because I know how. Pam is in her in interviews, and David Friedman is a wonderful, Brilliant. you know, young. I want to say Love young him. guy. He's not a young guy yeah. anymore, but but he's he's got a wonderful humor and and all that. So nice. What would I mean? Just talk about the panel you did together because I, I think that was probably really fun. Well, I I loved it. First of all, I'm a fan of the Carter, so I was never an anti-Carter person. I'm down for the Carter Thank era you. on Little House on the Prairie, so that was a bonus already going into it. But both Pamela and Jason, Jason and Dave Friedman um, right. have such great stories to tell. Pretty so great. it was just so easy, and it was so great hearing their stories and their memories and. Uh, I, I just thought it, I I had a blast with them. I think the panels are really sort of the heart and soul of the the operation. I mean the the sets, of course, and the interiors, of course, were incredible. But I don't know. There was something really special going on in that tent with all of those panels. I, I, what do you think, Pam? Oh, hundred yeah, percent yeah. agree with you. And at the end of the day, I wished I could have been at all of them. And I'm going to find a way to watch them all eventually. I yeah. thought that those were where the treasures were, you know. And when I saw the clips of you and Jonathan, and I just it brought me to tears, you know. Yeah, and Still that's crying. truly where the gold was, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there, it was really, really special. And and I will say, it was it was all of the panels. There wasn't one yeah. that was sort of like, eh, okay, well, we got through that one. I mean, they were all really great. <laughs> but, I, but I attribute that I attribute that to. 
you know, because sometimes you just don't know what right. you don't know how things are going right. to go. And that's okay. what's part of what's stressful about doing it is that, you know, it's not scripted. Well, there are so talking. many people. And, and here's the actors like, sure, an actor might be able to good interview. But you walk into that tent after taking a golf course up and downhill in the blowing wind <laughs> and the rain going, where am I going? What is happening? And then they throw you. Into, <laughs> and there's thousands. I mean, it was like 18,000 people over three days. Show. So but in even in the tent, it was. It was like a thousand people. It was hundreds and hundreds, and then you slowly pass the benches that kept going. It would be a thousand people, and then a thousand people outside the yeah, tent. Yeah, there's a. It's not running. like oh, we'll go to this tent. This could be a couple. Of, there's a thousand people <laughs> sitting on benches. It's just like what is happening, and they're like rabbit. They're hysterical. They're in the edge of their seats. That's really intimidating. And you had all these actors who are like, okay, I'm not sure what's going on at this event, and there's a thousand people in the tent, and this woman is asking me questions. So the fact but that I you made it, that work, holy moly! Oh well, I, I <laughs> honestly, I was just rolling with it, and that's very kind of you to give me any kind of credit that way but honestly it was easy because you guys were tell just and before every panel i'd say just tell stories yeah. that's that's all i'll i'll right. follow you guys right. right you know i have some questions but let's roll with your stories that's that's what we all are here to 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 listen to and you know, everyone did and it was beautiful it was beautiful and well, i i think was oh i'm sorry no i was gonna say i'm we need to we need to uh to button this up. Okay. Oh, geez. So, so say no, you're. No, it goes no, too fast. I know. Too say, much, say what you were going to say, and then you need to. We need to say goodbye to Pamela right. really quickly and button this up. So I was going to say, if I remember right, Karen was the panel ahead of us, <gasps> and oh, that you know, packed the house. People, you could hear packed. them clear across the park, reacting to everything she said, and so we, then. We come on and people are moving out and I'm thinking, oh no, no one really does like the Carters. No. No gonna stay. <laughs> and then somehow, somehow it filled back up again. So yeah, yeah, yeah and thank did. you. Thank you for making it easy to interview with you. And and thank you for the opportunity to work with you, my dear friend. And no. I just, uh, I love you both. Pammy, no, Pamela, absolutely. happy in, to be in your life. Yeah, likewise. It was great. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. It's so wonderful knowing you and, and the the same event was just magical so thank you uh we'll be we'll be back i, I would are we gonna do a question we're gonna do a, we're gonna do a question and we're gonna, we'll do we're a gonna race question for the right exit after yeah. this. race yes right after this <laughs> When you visit Simi Valley, California, you are stepping into the pages of history. Go from the pioneers to the presidents. Explore beautiful wildflowers, hike through iconic Hollywood locations, and end your day aboard the actual Air Force One at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library and Museum. It's less than 15 minutes away from Los Angeles, 30 minutes from Universal Studios. Simi Valley has small town charm with big time history. Go visit simivalley.com for more information. We also want to thank Alexander GMC of Simi Valley, Golden State Water Company, Marketscape, Strathern Historical Society, WM, formerly Waste Management, and Vista at Simi Valley Assisted Living. Thank you all for your support of the Little House 50 for 50 podcast. Okay. We're going to do... We did it. Hopefully two questions, but we're going to start okay. with one question at least. Time. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. It, uh, Courtney from Texas writes, it seems like so many child actors faced unfortunate fates. And with the Nickelodeon documentary now, this topic is at the forefront again. It seems the child actors have had, at least by Hollywood standards, um, from Little House on the Prairie, good and normal lives. How did the child actors of Little House avoid so many yes. of the issues of so many other child actors at the time? Absolutely. You have Thanks, noticed Courtney. this. I have joked about it and said, the cast of Little House, no arrest, no convictions. We're very proud. Um, <laughs> Um, but the reality is, you know, I said, we don't see us, us on TMZ with no pants. Um, you don't. Stati we had a lot of kids on that show. We should have way more people doing terrible things. We've had, yeah. we've done really well. Uh, two words, Michael Landon. There was absolutely, mm -hmm. the, it comes from the top. As you've seen on the horrifying Nickelodeon yeah. documentary yeah. at the yeah. horrible, yeah. unspeakable the things these monsters were doing. Um, mm -hmm. It comes from the top because if the top brass does is, is willing to say, we don't tolerate that, we want the parents there and we want these kids protected, less of that's going to happen. I mean, predators seek out situations where they can abuse children, where children are not being attended to. They see an opening. They go, oh, yeah, on this show, they don't really pay attention to whether they, I can go work there. Right. <laughs> they zero in on the kid who's lonely. or So... Those opportunities, that is why you do see a lot of predators go into show business because they can say, I'm an agent, I'm a photographer, and people leave their kids with them. It's, it's insane. 
little house. Well, what's so insidious about the Nickelodeon thing, too, is that the parents were on the set and Mm -hmm. they were still targeted and got them. People feel, uh, they're afraid, well, my kid will get fired and, hey, I don't want to stop the gravy train. This is sick, 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 sick. Little house, there was an attitude of we're protecting the kids. I've always said our crew, I've I have heard from other girls who grew up on sets where the crew was like catcalling and were like terrible. I said our crew, if I went to any, you remember our crew, those guys. If I went to anyone in our crew and said that man is bothering me, you wouldn't have found the body. And it was like, yeah. and it's just like, yeah, yeah we, yeah, not, I don't know, man. He got hit by a car. I don't know. I don't know where he went. <laughs> Um, they just they would just be gone. So we were there was a sense of protection. I felt protected. I felt the set teachers were on it all the time. This child needs more school. Um, and you you did you had to have decent grades in the work. Per- it was strict. I had my work permit. You know, you file it every year. I know people on other shows cheated and didn't have the grades and didn't have the medical yeah. examination report that said they were healthy. They were not really in good health. I know they cheated. Not on oh, Little like, House. Like Gary Coleman had kidney failure. He's having the dialysis, time and how working. is he getting the doctor to sign Ugh. off that he's in healthy shape? To where I don't right. know. Ugh, but on Little awful. House, that that kind of stuff didn't go on. You did go to school. They did not jip us on the school. The teachers were very firm. But people, they administered tests. They made sure we were doing our work. There was this attitude of this is how we're going to be. I of course had my Annie Mary in there. It was fantastic, but. There was a work ethic, and we were treated with respect. Like, as, you know, we've talked about, we've had people on, like Rachel, who said we were treated as adults and as children, but we did our job, and there was this weird level of respect that we were at the standard, mm-hmm. and that made a difference. We weren't treated like little stupid trained animals. A little, we just weren't. We were treated mm-hmm. like actors, and everyone from the show has been able to hold their head up and go, I was on a good show that people really liked, mm-hmm. and I was treated like a human being and an adult and a responsible person, and that makes a giant difference in your self-esteem and how you navigate life after that so you know I know some of our kids we've we've had our ups and downs we just haven't had the dire dire issues of feeling lost that so many kids did because of the way Little House was run we just were treated differently yeah, you see that that Nickelodeon thing, and it makes you realize how lucky you guys were that you were on. It's dangerous out there, folks. It really is. No kidding. All right. Do we have time for one more question or next? I think we need to go. We should go. Here we go. To go. (gasps) All right, everybody. That's a wrap for today. Uh, You're listening to the Little House Fifty for Fifty podcast. We're out there on the socials, you know, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and our website, Little Fifty Podcast dot com, where you can link up to all of us and see what is going on. And um, we'll see you next time, everybody. Bob, get the wig. Bob, get the wig. Can she do arms with us too? Can Pam the guest show the guest doing arms? Oh, yeah. Yay! Okay. We're all doing the airplane arms. <laughs>